Keep my eyes from beholding worthless things. Keep my eyes from beholding worthless things. I want to be the one who gives you everything. So keep my eyes from beholding worthless things. I want to be the one. Keep my eyes from beholding worthless things. Keep my eyes from beholding worthless things. I want to be the one that gives you everything. So keep my eyes from beholding worthless things. Keep my eyes on you. 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 Lord, keep my eyes on you. Hello, hello, Brother Ronaldo. Hello, Reverend. Hope you're doing well. I am not going to be long here. Um, I just finished ministering the word of the Lord. And now I'm going to share a brief <laughs> message that the Lord gave me as soon as I got up this morning. So I'm just going to share and then I'm going to get off. I'm not going to be doing any invites in because to me these things are not up for debate. <laughs> they just are what they are. I'm going to give it to you exactly the way the Lord told me to give it to you and then I'm going to get off. So again, I hope everybody is doing well. I hope everybody is having a wonderful um, Sunday as, as wonderful as can possibly be. We know that there has been lots of unrest. We know that there has been lots of all across the country, really, since Ahmad Arbery. But, you know, there's been Ahmad Arbery. There's been Dre Sean. There's been Breonna Taylor. Um, and then, of course, George Floyd. And these are the cases, again, I want to stress, these are the cases that we know about, right? These are the cases that are filmed. These are the cases that have been happening in real time that we have been made aware of. And so a couple of things that was on my heart as I got up this morning and I just listened for the Lord. And I was just like, what, what do I need to share? What do I need to say? I don't want to be one of those people that is just speaking off the top of my head or speaking out of just raw emotion without guidance. So good afternoon. Thank you guys for coming in real quick. So the first thing that, um, okay, right. So again, this is not a, I'm not having a dialogue right now. I do have dialogues. I have them Monday through Friday, 6 PM Eastern standard time. I will leave my link down. But this is not a dialogue today. This is just me sharing some things that God wants people to be aware of. All right. So, yeah. So as I was meditating this morning about what is going on, the first thing that I heard the Lord say was he wants us to be mentally healthy. He wants us to be mentally healthy. Mentally healthy mentally healthy. If you're going to engage in any kind of warfare, we know that warfare is not just physical, but we also know that we, that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, right? They're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And that's not just 
these spiritual things that people say, but it's doctrines, it's policies, it's laws that come against the foundations of people's life. So he says, I want you to be mentally healthy. I want you to be mentally healthy. And I want you to understand that a part of psychological warfare is getting you to rehearse trauma. It's getting you to rehearse things that are damaging. It's getting you to see and replay over and over and over again, traumatic things that are happening to people who look like you. Okay. I want you to be mentally healthy. So for African Americans, a part of your mental health is going to require you to stop replaying some of the videos that some of you are engaging in watching over and over and over again. Doesn't mean that you don't hear about it. It doesn't mean that you don't read the stories on it. It doesn't mean that you don't watch the interviews. But you've got to make sure that you're keeping yourself in a mentally healthy place so that you can properly do warfare. So he said, I want you to be mentally healthy. For our non-black brothers and sisters, I found this interesting because he said, you have spent a lot of time looking away. Black people have spent a lot of time looking on and being traumatized by images. But he said, you have spent a lot of time looking away. It is time for you to stop looking away. It's time for you to stop spiritualizing what is happening. It's time for you to stop using Jesus as a shield against accountability and responsibility to what is happening. Yes, we know that Jesus will fix it, but we also know that his spirit is inside of us and he works in this earthly realm through people to engage in the fixing process in the earth. So no, we're not waiting until the sweet by and by for things to change. That's the whole purpose of human creation. Okay, that's the whole purpose for human creation is that he, he put his spirit in us so that we could be change agents in the earth. All right. And he also said, you can protest in various ways. Recently, a couple hours ago, I got a inbox with someone telling me about a protest going on in another state, in another town, that even if I tried to drive to it, I wouldn't have been there um, at the time that they were, they were saying it was starting. And so they asked me, are you going? And I said, no, I'm in another state. But my protest is largely economic economic. So you can protest through political action. You can protest through economic action. You can protest through using your influence with the media. You can protest with your feet on the ground. And I think we need to, to stop judging the mode or method by which people find themselves in protest. My protest, as I said, is largely economic. I know people are talking about July 7th being a blackout um, for businesses, but most businesses already know that black people are planning to um, blackout ec economically July 7th. So what are they going to do? They're going to set sales July 1st through the 6th because you've decided that July 7th is the only day that you're going to participate in the economic blackout. Again, my protest largely is economic. So that means I don't black out just July 7th. It's 24-7, 365 for me. That is my form of protest. All right? For others, 
It's political. For some of us, it's a combination of things. Some of us have been working behind the scenes on the political side, calling police of chiefs, calling mayors, calling superintendents, calling police officers, political side. It's not always televised, as they say. All right. So there are various ways to protest. And here's the thing. Use your avenue of protest. And that's what I'm talking about, um, Mr. Garner. I protest 24-7, 365 economically. <laughs> I'm not trying to be funny, but I'm just saying, if I need to get something in business, for example, I have a black music producer. I have a black engineer. Okay. I have a black dentist. I'm just saying, when we say economic protest, there are, there are ways to protest that's not necessarily... I'm going to get out here with a video camera and live stream marching through the streets. March through these economic streets. Let's do that. Show up in some of these governor's and mayor's offices. Go to your local police station. Go talk to your police of chief, your uh, chief of police. All right. So there are various ways that you can protest. This is two things the Lord said. He said, tell them you have to plan for the long game. You have to plan for the long game. Hold seats of power. What is your long term game? And if you don't want to hold the seat of power, who are you looking to? Who can you look out to in your community? Who can you raise up? Look at, our, look at our Generation Z, our 15 to 18 year olds. Who can we look out amongst in our community and begin raising them up to take a path into politics, to take a path to become a lawyer, a judge, a mayor? You have to think long term. Who in your community can you look out to and say, in this time, we want to make sure that this person is on the path to hold a seat of power. Shout out to the mayors, um, Lightfoot, Lori Lightfoot and Mayor, Mayor uh, Keisha Lance Bottoms. They are holding seats of power so that when something happens in the state, that's still affecting, that's disproportionately affecting us, they can shut it down. They can sometimes protect us from ourselves when we're not making wise decisions. Mm -hmm. Because here's the thing, and I'm going to get to, and I'm almost done. Protests, riots. We know MLK said that a riot is the language of the unheard. But if you keep reading and you keep studying his words and his work, he also said riots can be easily disrupted by a superior force. So he was not against people protesting. He was simply saying it can be easily shut down by your government having a superior fighting force, a superior weapons force. You could be marching in the street but all your government has to do, they don't even have to put boots on the ground. They can just send in drones and it's over. So again, you have to play the long game. And if you're going to do physical protest, all right, some of you who are marching today and out there today, make sure you have some good shoes on, okay, to do protests. Because you may be covering miles of territory. Make sure you have good shoes. Make sure you bring things like water and snacks. I'm talking of the practical here. Make sure you have milk with you. In case forces are sent out and they start tear gassing you. 
Um, you will need milk to pour in your eyes to keep them from burning. Make sure you have a first aid kit. This, I'm just, this is practical. Okay. So if you're going to do physical protesting, take care of the practical before you just run out there. And then the last thing I'm going to say is make sure you understand that everybody who comes to a protest is not there for justice. Everybody who comes to the protest space is not there for um, genuine, authentic reasons of justice. Okay? In some of the areas I know specifically um, that I'm seeing, because I've been in those areas, I know they have active clan meetings. They have active clansmen in the areas. And two of the police chiefs have already reported that several of the people that have been arrested are white supremacist groups. So you may be thinking, hey, there are white people showing up to this protest. They're standing together with us in solidarity. No, some of them are white supremacists and they came to tear stuff up and let you take the fall for it. Okay? Some of them are anarchists. Some of them are Antifa. And if you don't know who Antifa is, go look it up, okay? They have other issues going on and they use the energy of protest to come in and in interject their own agenda into the energy of a protest. All right. So in my closing, be smart. Pay attention to your own mental health and how much things you are intaking that are trauma inducing like these videos and things that are being played online, the pictures that are being shown, the still shots that are being shown. All of that is psychological warfare. So please take care of your mental health while you are trying to advocate. Again, to my white brothers and sisters, it is time for you to stop looking away. Stop using Jesus as a um, cover. And yes, there's lots of crap out here going on. There's various ways to protest. Find the way that you plan on protesting and do that. If you work in politics, if you have access to leaders, if you have access to policymakers, you should be speaking up. If you are good friends with chief of polices, you certainly should be speaking up and asking questions about how is your policy going to change moving forward? What is your policy around um, police officers who abuse their power? What is your training policies? Do you have any citizens who, who sit on boards when you guys are making these decisions? Those are the things that you can be doing. If you work for the governor and the mayor's office, you have people in those in those circles, you should be having some conversations with them. There's more than one way to protest. There is more than one way to advocate. The point is to do it. All right. So I want to thank you all for your time this afternoon and your attention. I pray for each and every one of you again. Be smart, pay attention to your own mental health. There's obvious ways and various ways that you can protest that does not involve you putting yourself in harm's way. And think the long game. The goal really should be looking at holding seats of power. Who's holding seats of power? Again, I appreciate the mayor's who are setting the curfews because here's the thing. If they're saying that it's black people are the problem, guess what? If you're not there, they can't blame you. It's really that simple. If you're not there, they can't blame you. There are other ways to advocate. There are other ways to protest. One of the major ones we need to focus on, in my opinion, is economic economic. Where's your dollar going to? Shout out to the companies like Target. And if you have not read that article, shout out to uh, companies like Target who are issuing statements that say, yes, we understand people are tearing up property, but we have insurance. 
we're going to be okay. Our concern is what are we going to do about this injustice? What are we going to do about what's happening in our communities? We're going to build another building. We're going to make sure that people remain employed. We are concerned about the inhumane treatment of people in this country. So I do give a shout out to the companies that understand uh, the protest. I do give the shout out to that. Again, if you're going to be out physically doing protests, have good walking shoes. Make sure you have water and snacks. Make sure you have some milk. Make sure you have some first aid. And most importantly, keep your eyes out for agent provocateurs, people whose desire is not to protest. Their desire is to come in and infiltrate a protest and turn it into something else. Thank you, um, uh, Lady Zarian. I appreciate that. Um, NAMI.org is an excellent organization for your mental health. All right. Again, thank you guys for your time and attention. Have a great and wonderful Sunday. Be blessed. And uh, for those of you who want to tune in to Daring Dialogues, where we do dialogue and chop it up, that's Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, I believe there's a We Dare Squad person on here who can put down the link. It's pscp.tv forward slash life nation. Take care, everyone. And God bless.